The servants put a special screen between the ailing Russian Tsarina and the foreign physician. All for the sake of propriety. It was unpleasant for women to be sick in the royal family. After all, according to Russian traditions male healers had no right to touch and examine the Russian Tsarina, and for an incorrect diagnosis or untreated disease threatened a one-way trip. Usually the physician in the Russian royal family was a foreigner. The physician interviewed the Russian Tsarina behind a screen. Preferably if and speak not the Tsarina, but her maids. The Tsarina in the Golden Tsarina chamber had about 50 maids who made up her retinue. And this is in addition to the Barinas, who were in charge of more important matters on the women's half of the tarim. Tsarevnas and Tsarinas were usually looked after by nannies and midwives, and their methods of treatment were folk, for example herbs and ointments. Maria Miloslavskia, the wife of Tsar Alexei Mihailovich, once fell seriously ill. A foreign doctor was invited to the Tsar's chambers. By the time he arrived, all windows were curtained and shutters closed. No man was to see the Tsarina. In this pitch darkness, the frightened physician tried to diagnose the symptoms. It was useless. Desperate, the doctor asked for the unheard of, to feel the pulse of the Russian Tsarina. The room began to stir, the request was reported to Alexei Mihailovich. The Tsar agreed to the request of the doctor, but to feel the pulse of Maria can only through a cloth. To the groom's skin of the Tsarina cannot touch. Unfortunately, Maria Miloslavskia died of childbirth fever at the age of 44. Information about the royal illness was secret. For disclosure of the data could be executed. When Serena Elizabeth Petrovna fell ill, all the subjects who went to her chambers had to pretend that everything was normal. Particularly curious subjects were invited for questioning in the secret chancellery. Only Elizabeth Petrovna was already examined normally, while her predecessors were not. Later, the interest in the illnesses of the monarch's family was satisfied through bulletins. This practice was first used when Catherine II held the title of Grand Duchess. In reality, however, the state of health was also carefully concealed, and sometimes untruths were written in the bulletins to distract the eye. The death of any noble patient was regarded only as the doctor's fault. All responsibility was shifted to the physician. When Catherine, Duchess of Mecklenburg, niece of the Russian Emperor Peter I, died, the poor doctor was questioned by the Privy Chancellery. The doctor was acquitted. However, he was deprived of all his posts and wealth. In the 15th and 17th century, the medic was the closest person to the royal person in Russia. As Suvorov said, the entrance is one ruble, and the exit is two rubles. Many tried to bribe doctors to put poison in the mixture. That's why all pills were carefully controlled. Servants tasted the potions before giving them to the royal family. But it didn't always work. Serena Anastasia, the first wife of Ivan the Terrible, was poisoned with a mercury poison called Venetian poison. Up to this point, the Serena had been examined by German physicians. They looked the sovereign in the eyes and examined the skin on her hands. As a result, they asked to remove the Tsarina's shirt. To examine the Tsarina naked was unheard of for Russian traditions. Ivan the Terrible loved his wife so much that he agreed to this sin. And the doctors only needed to feel Anastasia's abdomen. Evdokia Lukianova, the second wife of Tsar Mikhail Romanov, was often subjected to bloodletting. She was treated by German doctors. True, made bloodletting Tsarina woman. So we can conclude. An enviable life was the Russian Tsarina, before the reforms of Peter the Great. With all their wealth, women were limited in rights and freedom. They were hermits in a golden cage. Thank you for your time and subscribe to my channel.